You guys want to be in the video? Oh my goodness, you're so cute. Hello and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney and I am so glad that you are here with me. Today I am going to give you five counterintuitive ways to create more hours in the day. I just want to wake up with more time on my hand than hours in the day. I say counterintuitive because many of the things that I will list will take time. However, I have found that it takes time to learn how to save time and it takes energy in the beginning to learn how to conserve energy later on. Many people feel as though they do not have enough hours in the day and this can be very overwhelming and debilitating. By clicking on this video, it is clear that you have some desire to change this perspective. A desire to change is the first step in creating more hours in your day. There was once a time in my life when I was unknowingly addicted to stress. This may sound a bit odd because how can someone be addicted to something that doesn't feel good? Aren't people usually addicted to things that bring them pleasure? Sometimes, yes. In many ways, an addiction to stress is a self-destructive behavior. However, I would argue that a perpetual state of stress did bring me pleasure in some ways. I think I was addicted to the validation that busyness brought me. Being perpetually busy, never having enough time, and always having an impending deadline to feel stressed about became an internal indication that I was being productive. I can't finish all this and sleep at the same time. You have to sleep, it's what keeps you pretty. Who cares if I'm pretty if I fail my finals? Ugh. I certainly wasn't ready to admit it at the time, but claiming to be consistently stressed and busy and tired whenever someone asked me how I was doing was a subconscious choice to victimize myself and seek validation for my efforts. In reality, my accomplishment of several difficult tasks in a day and my mindset towards these accomplishments should have and could have been separated. Feeling constantly stressed about my lack of time did not make my deadlines approach any slower. Getting emotional and overwhelmed did not change my test scores or improve my study habits. If you want to get more out of your day, be more productive and feel better about yourself in the process, then you must be willing to admit the level of control that you truly do have over the way that you spend your time. There is a concept in personality psychology coined by Julian B. Rotter in 1954 called the locus of control. There are two types, an internal locus of control and an external locus of control. Those with an internal locus of control believe that one can control one's own life. Those with an external locus of control believe that their lives are dictated by outside factors that they have very little influence over, or that chance or fate controls their life. Very few people adhere to 100% of either ideology, but rather sit somewhere in the spectrum between the two. There seem to be overwhelmingly positive consequences for those who predominantly possess an internal locus of control. These people are more likely to take responsibility for their actions, feel confident in the face of challenges, are less influenced by the opinions of others, report being happier and more independent, tend to be physically healthier, and achieve greater success in the workplace on average. While those with an external locus of control often blame outside forces for their actions, credit luck or chance for any successes they may experience in their life, and often feel hopeless in the face of challenges. One viewpoint though is not inherently right or wrong, better or worse. In fact, many people with an external locus of control lead a very carefree, laid back, and happy life. And people with an internal locus of control can incite depression and anxiety when they experience failure because of the intense internal pressure that they experience. However, inducing any positive change in your life must be associated with an internal locus of control. So I will repeat myself. If you want to get more out of your day, be more productive and feel better about yourself along the way, then you have to admit the level of control that you truly do have over the way that you spend your time. I don't have time is a phrase that is thrown around constantly, but what we really mean is I won't make the time. It's my last bit of extra time. And that's not a bad thing. Choosing what you want to spend your time on is a vital part of being human. One of the beautiful things about being alive is the right to derive meaning from your existence. This meaning is inevitably derived through the way that you spend your time. Of course, there are things like bills, jobs, and social obligations, but you still have free will. You willingly go to your job. 
Between the choice of going to work and getting evicted from your apartment because of an inability to pay rent, you chose working. Of course, the desire to change the social infrastructure that makes this the case is your own prerogative. But under the current circumstance, this is the choice that is laid out before you and you are still making it whether you are happy about it or not. I believe that the first step in time management is acknowledging that the way that you spend every moment of your existence is a choice, regardless of how conscious or desirable this choice is. Feeling like you have more time is just that. It's a feeling. One cannot slow the turn of the earth. And I suppose if one could, they probably would not be watching this video. But you can change the perception of your time Time and your productivity within a given window. Remember that time is just the perception of change. So if you can alter your perception or alter your rate of change, then you can maybe quiet that screaming inner voice that tells you failed every time your head hits the pillow at night. My first tip is take time to plan. We've all been bogged down with seemingly hundreds of things on our to-do list at some point. We've all had days that feel impossible to tackle. So much so that the thought of sitting down for 15 minutes and writing out a to-do list or a schedule seems a bit silly and like a waste of time. I do not have time for this. We know what we need to do and it seems like our time is better spent doing the things instead of planning to do the things. In some ways, this can be true. Many people can use the time spent planning to escape time spent actually executing the plan, myself included. However, we've all been fed the dozens of reasons why planning out our day or writing a to-do list has benefits. We know that there are benefits. We know it's good for us. But I wanna focus on one benefit in particular, and that is avoiding decision fatigue. If you have to do 10 things today, then it is inevitable that at some point during the day, you are going to have to make the decision of which thing you're gonna do first, how you're gonna do it, what tools you need to accomplish it, where you're gonna do it, etc., etc., etc. And you can either spread these decisions out throughout the day, or you can group them and do them all in the morning or at the beginning of the week. Grouping them all together can minimize the amount of time that your brain has to spend making decisions. Planning how and when to accomplish a task can sometimes take more energy than actually completing the task. And concentrating this amount of energy into one specific time can help you conserve that energy to actually accomplish the tasks throughout the day. This falls under the umbrella of working smarter and not harder. However, I have a qualm with that saying. Working smart is hard. Learning how to work smart towards your goals and under your circumstances does take effort. Number two, set things out the night before. Small tasks in particular tend to take more time to plan and set up than they actually do to execute. For example, if you're picking out an outfit for the gym, it's going to take way more time for you to go to your closet, open it up, browse through all your options, make a selection, than it is for you to just slip on the outfit. This can also be said for the transitions between small tasks. Say tomorrow morning, you need to brew a cup of coffee, take your dog out, shower, and attend a really short Zoom call meeting. All of these things might take you five to 10 minutes each, but in total could take you up to an hour or more. This is because shifting from task to task requires some amount of transition time, such as setting up your laptop or your coffee or changing clothes. If you want to create more time, especially in the mornings, try easing the setup and transition periods by setting everything up the night before. Plug in your laptop and set it on the desk that you're gonna use to take the Zoom call. Set out your coffee mug and everything else you might need to brew a cup of coffee. Setting these things out the night before could take you maybe be five to 10 minutes, but could save you twice as much or three times as much time in the morning and energy. When my schedule was most overwhelmed, I found that it was the transition period between tasks that really triggered a stress response and the perception that I just didn't have enough time in the day. If you can improve the ease of these transitions, you can improve your efficiency and your perception of the amount of time that you have. Number three, take breaks. This one is certainly counterintuitive because many people think that if they are busy and they can't find the time to even accomplish their tasks, then how could they possibly find the time to take breaks in between their tasks? However, taking regular breaks has been shown to improve your productivity and well-being. An increase in productivity is an increase in efficiency, which is an increase in time. And this doesn't just apply to work environments, especially because many people don't have full control over how often or how much time they can take for breaks during work. This can also apply to domestic tasks. 
For example, if it's a Sunday and you really wanted to meal prep that day and deep clean your kitchen, take a little 15 minute walk. You are going to be so much more focused and so much more productive when you get back to the task. And when you're on your little 15 minute walk, try to let your mind go to something other than the tasks you have to do that day or all the tasks you have to do for the week. If that concept sounds impossible to you, then I highly recommend looking into meditation. Number four, do things at the exact same time every day. Your brain is always looking for ways to maximize its efficiency. If you give it a task to perform, it will try to find the way it can do it with the least amount of effort. This is why many people naturally Naturally fall into routines. Routines remove decision fatigue like we talked about earlier, they speed up your ability to accomplish things, and they reduce your chances of failure, error, or mistakes. Routines are therefore a great tool for maximizing efficiency and feeling like you just have more time to accomplish things. This is why I recommend fitting as much as you possibly can into a routine. Think of the things that you do every single day or every single week, like exercising, cooking, cleaning. How can you fit these into very specific time blocks? And therefore, expect them. When I know that every day between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. I'm going to exercise, I am more likely to fully relax into that activity. Feeling distressed about the passage of time in a day is usually due to being unsure of whether or not you are going to accomplish everything that you set out to accomplish that day. But when you routinely accomplish your non-negotiables at the same time every day, you will at least be aware of how much time and when you will have available to accomplish anything else you might need to. This will help prevent the loss of healthy habits that you want to keep up with that keep getting pushed aside because of the demands of other stresses. If you want to exercise every day, for example, sacrificing this activity on a whim because of an overload of other tasks is an admittance that it's lower on the priority list. This is of course a personal decision and the finite amount of time in a day lends itself to some amount of sacrifice. But at least give yourself the ease of the knowledge that this sacrifice was thought through and was a conscious choice. Number five, be present. As I mentioned before, the time that I felt the most overwhelmed during a stressful day was during that transition period between tasks. So when I would be driving from school to work or when I had just gotten off a client call and it was time for me to do the dishes, it is most important to be mindful during these periods of mental downtime. When you're in your car commuting to work, when you are sitting in the waiting room of a doctor's office, when you're waiting in line for a cup of coffee, these moments can be pivotal in changing your perception of the day. Being mindful of this time does not necessarily mean being productive in the traditional sense. Although this can be helpful if you're sitting in the waiting room of a doctor's office and you have the opportunity, answering some emails so that you can save yourself some time later on in the afternoon can be a great way to spend your time. However, another productive way to spend your time is to rest mindfully. Many people who have a lot on their plates have a really hard time finding mental rest. It seems there is always something to be done, always something you could be doing, but I urge you in these moments to decide which you would like it to be. Would you rather accomplish a task or would you rather rest? Either is fine, but sitting there in silence while your brain screams at you all of the stress that you're experiencing and all of the millions of things you have to get done that day is not an option. And between productivity and rest, sometimes you don't really have a choice. Like when you're driving, I find that the only really productive thing that I can do is phone calls. And if I don't have any phone calls to make, then I'm kind of forced to choose rest. My only option is to sit there for 20 minutes until I have arrived at my next task. But what you do in the next 20 minutes can significantly turn your day around. Take a moment to look around, take some deep breaths, play your favorite song, roll the windows down, observe the world around you. When you are mindful of the moment, it can expand, become richer, more immersive, more detailed. Have you ever noticed that a scene in a book that might span five pages can flash by in an instant in the movie adaptation? I think this is the perfect analogy for the passing of time. The exact same moment can be experienced so slow for one person and instantaneously for another. When you find that your days are going by too quickly and you find that you need more time, slow it down by reading the world around you like a book. It's often not the tasks that are overwhelming you, but the way that you feel about the tasks. If you are depressed, you are living in the past. If you are anxious, living in the future. If you are at peace, 
you are living in the moment. Lao Cha. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and click that little notification bell so that you never miss a fun video with me, Sydney. And if you watch this whole thing, then you're my new best friend. I love you so much. You can follow me on Instagram or on TikTok. Send me a DM so we can actually be friends. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.